Hello and welcome everybody, it's JWitz here with some Pokemon trading card game online action. Now I know it's been a long time since I've done a Pokemon trading card game video, you guys have been asking for videos of all kinds for a long time now, and now that Renee is helping edit some of my videos, I've got a few extra minutes in the day to work on some other projects, I don't yet have full time to make fully fledged TCG, uh, like news and deep strategy videos like I used to with Profit, but I did used to run what I like to call TCG Tuesday, and I figured I would at least pick that back up and bring it to you guys. So for today's TCG Tuesday, I'm going to go over a deck, play through it, and show you guys what it's all about. Today's deck is Dom Fan and Walls. I really enjoyed this deck. I was able to top 32 with it at the Indiana Fort Wayne Regional. There were over 400 masters of that regional, so it was pretty cool to do pretty well at a very large tournament. I don't really play competitively anymore, but that doesn't mean that I don't like analyzing the game at a competitive level. It's just uh, I used to play for Worlds Invites, but now that I do Worlds Commentary and Nationals Commentary with Pokemon Company International, uh, Worlds Invite doesn't really mean that much for me anymore. So yes, uh, for everyone who's always asking, I'm always playing the game, I'm just not always necessarily competing. So today, we are taking this deck and we are adding some new cards from the Phantom Forces set. For a quick rundown, for those of you guys who might not have ever seen this deck before, it revolves all around Donphan. It's an uncommon card, and it doesn't seem that impressive at base value, but there were a lot of fighting support cards that came out in Furious Fists that aided it. So the idea is you use Donphan and Spinning Turn to continually switch with a bench Pokemon for one energy, and that can deal a ton of damage when you combine it with strong energy, combine it with Fighting Stadium, it's all of a sudden a pretty potent attack and you can throw up a variety of different walls. I used to have more walls of this type, the Kiram and Zekrom Outragers, but there's a new card called Robo Substitute that I'll talk about in just a second. So yes, you do have less uh, type-based counters. The idea behind the Zekrom and the Kiram is you can take damage, you have 130 HP, and then you can Outrage for a single double colorless energy to deal decent damage and hopefully knock something out that's weak to you. Evil Tall is weak to Lightning, Lugia is weak to Lightning, so you've got that for Zekrom. And with Kiram, it's for knocking out either possibly Fire Pokemon or Rival Dawn fans. They've got Water, this deck's pretty popular. So those two deal that. The Sigilith is sort of a straight wall. It has the Safeguard ability, prevents effects of all attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your Pokemon EX. Uh, there are just so many decks in this format that rely on Pokemon EX. So you throw up a Sigilith, and all of a sudden they can't damage you at all. They can use Hypnotoxic Laser, hit around you, maybe use a Lysander, or an Escape Rope. Um, just different cards that can pull up Pokemon off the bench. But overall, I still think two Sigilith is a great play in this deck. Some people have been taking them out because other decks like Donphan are getting more popular. This deck runs no EX Pokemon, but I still think two is a great play. You've also got Halucha. It's not really a typical wall at only 70 HP, but it does have Fighting Resistance, so once again, it's a nice little sponge against the mirror. It has Free Retreat. You don't have to attach a Float Stone for it to retreat for free, it just does that on its own. And Flying Press is an incredible attack in a pinch. Deals 60 damage or um, 80 damage if you attach a strong energy to it. 100 if you have the Fighting Stadium and you're attacking an EX. It only works on EX Pokemon anyway. So it's just a great one energy attacker that can help sweep up a game if you need to. Other than that basic strategy of hitting and switching, the big new change from the Phantom Forces set is this guy, Robo Substitute, and he makes this deck even better. You can play it straight to your bench, you can't start with it, but you just play it on your bench as a 30 HP colorless basic Pokemon. If it's knocked out, your opponent does not get a prize card. That is a brutal denial. Like I said, with the Sigilyph, there are other cards, like Lysander, like Escape Rope that can get around it, but eventually they're going to have to deal with these things, they're going to have to knock them out in the active slot, and they're not going to get a prize for it. Which is why we run four. It's just a huge wall, it's really annoying, and while it can't retreat, if for some reason your opponent cannot deal the 30 damage to knock it out, you can always just discard it straight from the active spot, straight into the bench. So if you want to, you can just discard it and get on with your life. It is four extra turns to survive most of the time, and that is huge. Already, this deck is pretty annoying to deal with. You don't run any EX Pokemon, which give up two prize cards per knockout, just one prize card each. And so uh, it just stacks up a ton of damage. You hide on the bench, you eventually can wreck. Uh, it's a really high energy cost attack, but you can afford it because you're throwing up so many walls and that knocks out EXs. 
Uh, other than that, I'm trying to look and see if there's any other major changes. This deck list is based off the one that Kyle Puka Sugovic threw together on his video. I will throw a link to his video in the description if you want to watch a second game with a different matchup with a very similar Don Fan deck. He also helped me with the base deck that I played at Regionals, so I figured I'd at least throw a shout out to him. I guess uh, the one big thing is there are a lot of different item cards that you can sort of fit into this deck. You can grab an item card off Karina. I like to opt still for, it's kind of boring, Professor's Letter just grabs two basic energy cards, but basic energy I feel like are really important. Enhanced Hammer has been reprinted, which discards special energy directly, so being able to grab basics when you need to is helpful. It's helpful in the early late game in general, it just makes sure that if you don't have energy for a crucial turn where you need to attach, a Karina can eventually become a Professor's Letter, which can eventually become energy for this turn and the next one. There are other cards, like Enhanced Hammer, in fact. We are just talking about you can put that in this slot, you can put Bicycle in this slot. There are a lot of different trainer cards that you can fit in, but I feel like Robo Substitute is just so strong that you really gotta play the four. Um, some people maybe cut to three. But because of this, you don't really have that much flexibility with the deck, which is why so many of the deck lists that you see are gonna be pretty bland. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that have been changed. There are less Floatstone because you're running less walls that need Floatstones, they only have two and the one escape rope. You can take out the escape rope. The escape rope's a one-time switch, it forces your opponent to switch up one of their Pokemon. Heck, you could even run the card that's just called Switch. Um, but if you don't want that, you can have that become the third floatstone. And with the energy, the only real change is I used to have it like this, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. I have changed it just because Enhanced Hammer exists. I'm even considering doing this. Just cutting out, I know Strong Energy is such a powerful card, Double Colorless Energy is so helpful. It both feeds the Double Colorless cost in Wreck, while also feeding the Outrages. But, uh, there's just so much Enhanced Hammer, it just discards your energy completely, it's very demoralizing. But yeah, in summary, your strategy is pretty simple. You use Donphan, you Spinning Turn, move up one of your Bullet Sponges on the bench, uh, maybe a Robo Substitute for zero prizes, you continually switch, retreat, switch, retreat, spinning turn, and you can build up to wreck because most of the time you are safe on the bench. It's an incredible deck, and it doesn't even use any EX Pokemon, so it's also pretty cheap compared to most of the other decks. I would say it's probably the best bang for your buck deck right now. So let's go ahead and check out a game with it. I'll show you guys a little bit more how this thing works in action. All right, and we finally got a matchup. Took a little bit. Um, from that brief glimpse of the type symbols on my opponent's side of the field, it looks like my opponent will be using some type of dark deck. I know they show like a color for many of the types, but if there's dark, it is very likely an evil tall deck, which means I could be in a bit of trouble. This is definitely one of the deck's worst matchups. And as I showed you guys in the deck list earlier, we've actually cut back on a lot of the electric type counters that you would normally use when you have uh, the weakness on the evil talls. I only run the one Zekrom, I used to run two Zekrom, and the uh, Dedene, or Dedene, however the kids call it these days, um, as a way to knock out Evil Tall. If it has three energies and you use a Silver Bangle. Long story short, we don't have those counters anymore. Instead, we've got Substitute Robots, so we'll see how those go. Until then, uh, we open Double Fampy. My opponent started by poisoning me right away with Hypnotoxic Laser, not the end of the world. And because this vampy is active and my opponent's already threatening a second energy on the Evil Tall, I'm just gonna pass, allow this active one to get knocked out, and attach on the bench. On the bright side, we've got a pretty decent hand. We've got two solid supporters, depending on how my opponent sets up. The Don Fan to evolve right away, and none of that matters. Plays an end. So we're going back in. Actually not the end of the world though, because we did only have a four card hand, and puts both players' hands back in their deck. You draw one card for each prize card you still have remaining, early game. Both players are gonna get six. So, Evil Tall hits me up with the Y Cyclone, it's a really deadly attack if they have the three energies, or the double. You deal 90, or 110 if you have the extra 20 of the Muscle Band, and you get to move an energy to the bench so you can sort of conserve energy on the bench while still dealing really decent damage off two energies. So I evolved to the Dawn Fan, and so far it's not looking great. The Dawn Fan itself is okay, but it gets a lot worse when Evil Tall has the Fighting Resistance. So I play an Ultra Ball to go ahead and check the Pokémon, and oh no. Like I said, we're only running one counter to the Evil Tall's weakness. We don't even have it! 
Um, I just decided to go ahead and grab a Halucha. This is actually maybe a slight mistake. I figure, oh, my opponent can't necessarily knock out Halucha unless they have a double, and I will be able to just retreat for free. Turns out they actually have the Muscle Band. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, it's actually not a terrible play, though. By playing Halucha, it sort of encourages your opponent to remain in the active spot, knock out the Halucha, and this could potentially set up a knockout for me next turn, since I've already got three energy with the double colorless on Donphan. But it's not a perfect play. The right one would probably be grabbing the Sigilith. The problem is you never really know if you're going to get the Float Stones or not. I'm only running two Float Stones now because you run so many of the sub bots, so I'm going to have to wait it out. Uh, another reason why the Sigilith isn't always great is because they do run that, I call it Evil Tall Small, it's not an EX, and that basic one can hit right through Sigilith. It only blocks Pokemon EX attacks. So while maybe not the greatest play, um, it does give my opponent an extra prize card, my main attacking Pokemon is still safe, and I've got lots of cards to draw, and I have to make a tough choice. I can attach to the active and use Wreck, discard the Stadium, it will surely knock out the Evil Tall EX, which gives me two prize cards and ties this up. But if you look on the bench, my opponent already has at least one energy on an Evil Tall EX. All you need is two energy and an Evil Ball, and that will knock out a Donphan with four energy on it. Evil Ball is just a really, really good energy efficient attack. Deals 20 already, then plus 20 for each energy that both of you have attached. If you have four energy attached, you're adding 80 damage to the attack. They get an additional 40 with just two energy and then 20 from the base, and you're, you're out, you get knocked out. So it's a lot of hard work to give up. So at this point, I'm almost better off taking out this Evil Tall EX in chunks. Uh, I can deal three separate spinning turn attacks if I continue getting boosts. For example, the Fighting Stadium deals an extra 20 damage. The Strong Energy attached to me deals an extra 20 damage. Uh, there's a Muscle Band on the bench. There's an additional extra 20 damage. So it at least helps you deal the resistance a little bit. Now, the big unfortunate thing here is despite drawing all those cards, I did not get any substitute bots, so I am forced to throw up a Fampy just to get wasted. This is actually pretty bad. Your only real attacker in this deck is the Fampy and Donphan, and I'm going to have to sacrifice two of them fairly early in the game. Also, my stadium just got replaced for Shadow Circle. Really interesting counter stadium card. It allows dark Pokemon to no longer have weakness when it's in play. They also had the Lysander, which is what I was really hoping they wouldn't have. Uh, allows you to pull up a Pokemon off the bench. All that hard work on the Donphan and it gets knocked out. So could I have wrecked and taken the knockout and gotten a little bit more efficiency with this Donphan? Maybe, but it would have cost an extra energy attachment. And instead I decided to attach to the bench Fampy, allowing me to at least set up this new backup Donphan a little bit faster. So right away, um, I played Karina. It's a great card in these fighting decks. Allows you to grab a fighting Pokemon and a trainer card. It is the perfect way to search out the sub bots. So there it is. So I can evolve, um, I can attach, and now I have two energy instead of one if I decided to attach active to the other Donphan. We have a knockout. That thing's only got 30 HP left. And so while it is sort of a slow and arduous process, we do grab two prizes every time we knock out a Pokemon EX. And I don't run any Pokemon EX of my own, so my opponent has to essentially continually run through one prize at a time, or even zero when the subs come up. So, there it is. Robo Substitute, ready to go. We get our knockout with Spinning Turn, it puts you to the bench, and now that my opponent has already used a Lysander, I'm hoping that they don't have that many more, or um, just don't have any Versus Seekers. We play another Shauna, uh, Shuffle Hand in, draw five. Simple refresh draw. It's not as good as the old Professor Oak's new theory, but it's still pretty strong. And they just pass. Wow, that was pretty bad. Um, they couldn't even attach and deal any attack with Evil Tall. Would have knocked out the Robo Substitute. Not that it really matters though. Robo Substitute cannot retreat. So you sort of just discard it, um, but that's fine. It was able to stall for a turn and that's all I really need out of it. Also, uh, grabbing the Zekrom off my prizes was a pretty big deal. I only run the one and I didn't have a great odds. It was a uh, one in three that I would find off the prizes. But now that it's here, it is also a great wall to throw up. If my opponent can't knock it out in one hit, which they usually can't if I don't have any energy on it, Zekrom soaks up damage and then Outrage deals a ton of damage and uh, is multiplied by two for weakness. So I'm pretty happy with that. We do have a 2-2 Donphan, so we'll at least hopefully force our opponent to run through 
Four Fampy slash Don fans got at least two of them online. I think here, because I do want to attack, it's just time to uh, drop the sub bot. But uh, these small Evil Talls are so hard. They're even harder to deal with than the Evil Tall EX because you don't get the bonus damage. Normally you get extra 20 damage from that fighting stadium. You don't. Um, also, I have the Silver Bangle attached. I opt for the 2-2 Silver Bangle Muscle Band line. And here's an opportunity where maybe it's not as strong. Um, it deals 30 extra damage to EX Pokemon, zero extra damage to Evil Tall Small. So I have to deal 40 and switch. This is going to be a slow process, but on the bright side, if they do decide to attack the Zekrom, that beefs it up for an outrage that can possibly knock out their EXs for just a double. And I've got the double in hand, sort of sitting on it. It's not a terrible situation to be in. So they drop another Hypnotoxic Laser. This could be really bad if they hit heads. They don't. Uh, heads activates sleep. You already get the automatic poison. If you're asleep, you flip between turns. If I flip tails between those turns, I can't retreat the Zekrom for free. It has the float stone right now for the free retreat, but without it, uh, my only real out for a switch would be something obscure like the um, escape rope. It's not called Warpoint anymore. I, kept, I, I don't know why. Sometimes Pokemon will repeat cards with the exact same effect, but they'll rename it. You'll always be Warpoint to me, escape rope. So now I've got a handful of options. The Versus Seeker is pretty good. Um, I can pull up any support I've discarded. Earlier in the game, I discarded a Lysander specifically because I now run the two versus Seeker. It's not a terrible support to have in the discard because you can just pull it out at any point. You find one of these trainers or you can search it out with a Karina. So I have a handful of options. I can attach the double colorless energy to Zekrom and maybe knock out this Evil Tall active, but then I get knocked out by the Evil Tall on the bench, the Evil Tall EX. Just doesn't seem like that good of a prize trade. Or I can go kind of all in and take two prizes off of a bench Evil Tall EX and then just hope that I can muster up enough attack through the end of the game to knock out another EX. I have four prizes left. The ideal trade in this game is you knock out three EX Pokemon for six prizes. The Evil Tall Small is not really that favorable. It's just going to give me one prize and then I still have to knock out at least two more Pokemon. So why not? I'm sort of in a weird spot. Let's just go all in. I go ahead and wreck, which deals the humongous extra damage when there is a stadium in play for you to discard. So it is a partially nice thing that my opponent will maybe be playing another stadium card if they want to prevent the weaknesses. Um, but while it's not in play, I got to play my own. So they drop the muscle band, Colrus, and all of a sudden I get pretty hopeful. They still need an energy to knock me out. Oh, but of course, a Colrus for five, you're probably expected to find the energy. Oh, we did have a glimmer of hope that Donphan would be surviving, and that would have been just game right there. Unfortunately, it's not, but once again, because Donphan's a non-EX, they're only taking one prize, and I've got a little bit of leeway here. I can throw up Zekrom. Sure, uh, maybe they can knock out Zekrom with third energy. They'll deal 110 with the Y Cyclo and knock me out. But uh, I can always retreat it. I do have the other float stone now, and here the Sigilith can really shine. It has Safeguard, which basically prevents all damage from attacks dealt by EX Pokemon. My opponent, they do have an energy on that Evil Tall Small, but it only deals 30 damage at a time. And so if they want to keep this Evil Tall EX active, um, they're not going to be able to attack my Sigilith. So worst case scenario, I can retreat. I can spinning turn back to Sigilith and maybe poach this final Evil Tall EX for a prize. I'm going to go ahead and play N. I could have drawn a lot of cards here, but I figure I'm actually in a better spot than my opponent if I can simply switch out to the Sigilift, so boom, uh, my N, we're both only drawing two cards. I also drew extremely well. Professor Juniper off two is certainly good. Now my opponent, they only have three cards in hand. Oh, and they hit a Cull Wrist, so they get a refresh, but you always got to take those risks. Uh, if you can cripple your opponent with an N, that can usually turn the entire game around. So here, up oh, card was loading. There is, there it is. There's the Dedean Dedene. Um, great in the mirror, great for knocking out electric weeks, but here not so much. So they are able to get the dark ride down um, through the Ultra Balm. I was wondering if they played it or not. And now the dark ride's down. He has the ability where if you have a darkness energy attached, you could retreat for free. So instead of having to dump the energy that the Evil Tall EX has on the bench, you can just retreat out. Now I am in a really interesting spot. Checking my discard pile, I think there's two double colorless in. 
I only play three now. I used to play four, but there's just so much enhanced hammer. I cut it down. If I can hit that third double colorless energy and in out to Lysander, either Lysander itself or the Versus Seeker, I could do Outrage with Zekrom for a complete knockout for the 120 HP that's remaining on the Evil Tall EX. Uh, it is asking for a lot. The Karina, unfortunately, can't get me at all. I'm debating, do I just do I play the Karina or do I try and go all in on this Juniper? Juniper's drawing seven. There aren't that many cards left in my deck. I actually, sometimes when I do search cards, I noticed um, when I was rewatching this, sometimes you want to check that little box in the corner that says show all. I don't think I ever did that this game, so I never actually perfectly searched through my deck to determine what my last prize cards were. Um, for example, I, I play like an energy search card and only search out the energies. But if you click show all, you can find them all. So I'm still debating if my final double colorless energy is in the prizes or not. Until then, I can still retreat in spinning turn. I finally found a few more uh, robo subs, which are fantastic. They just absorb a hit. As long as my opponent doesn't find another Lysander or Versus Seeker, um, I can sort of just sit behind these substitutes and wall them. And on the bright side, even if they do have an ability to knock out one of my Pokemon, if the double color synergy is still in my deck, either the Don Fan or the Zekrom uh, can both save the day. So even though your opponent keeps knocking out these substitutes, they don't give up prize cards. It is so annoying. I forced my opponent to run through, I think that's two subs now, and I've got the other two. That can buy you a grand total of four extra turns. And that is humongous. Just keep dropping it. I debate dropping the stadium. Um, it could be helpful for some kind of wreck or knockout. Um, my only fear is it'll just be replaced by my opponent's stadium. I figure if my opponent drops that stadium and removes all weakness from their darkness Pokemon, that'll ruin my little Zekrom strategy. So I'm gonna hold my stadium on the off chance that they play stadium and then I can just counter it with mine. So another spinning turn. We are dealing a pathetic amount of damage here. Just throwing up the robo subs. Um, but it's enough to buy time, at least for now. They end me into two cards. Um, not much better than the two I had before. But my opponent clearly is also sort of on the ropes. They don't have too much to do. Just keep attacking with the evil tall small while they can. Charge up as many energy as they want onto some of their bench Pokemon. So I'm knocked out. Once again, no prize card for you because I'm a robo sub. Team Flare has created this horrific invention. Oh my goodness, now that is a great top deck. So we've got a Juniper. I'm debating, like, do I attach the Muscle Band? It really has no use anywhere. Um, <laughs> robo sub's not going to use it. Uh, I have the Escape Rope, which forces my opponent to switch out as well as myself. There's no one on my opponent's bench that I want them to switch out to. In fact, it would allow them to switch to the clean evil tall, which doesn't seem like that helpful for me. But here, off the Juniper, I do finally have both the Lysander and the Versus Seeker. Unfortunately, no double colorless energy still, but we now have an alternate route that we can take. We now have three energy on the Don Fan on the bench, one more is a wreck, and the Lysander can pull up either of those EX Pokemon on the bench. So, go ahead and switch out. Spinning turn, it's still not a knockout because of that fighting resistance and because I have not a muscle band, the silver bangle attached. Um, but we have put ourselves in a pretty good situation to win. Now, if my opponent shoves my hand back in with an N, maybe they can uh, stop me, but they have played a lot of Ns in the last couple of turns. And Max Potion also doesn't hurt me. Um, I have a one hit knockout on board and the Professor Juniper pretty much signals to me that I've got the game. We hid behind four Robo Substitutes, and those four extra turns were enough where I could just sit and top deck, even with a low hand, eventually find a Juniper, and eventually find the tools I need to win the game. So they're gonna knock out the Robo Substitute. Once again, zero prize cards. It is so disgusting. We got Don Fan up, we have the fourth energy in hand, and the Lysander can pull up either the Evil Tall EX or the Dark Rai EX on the bench for knockout. The Fighting Stadium allows me to deal the more damaging Wreck Attack, but because the Dark Rise fighting weak, it wouldn't have mattered regardless. And my opponent scoops. I think that would have been like 340 damage because of the weakness, but uh, we didn't get to do it. <laughs> they left before. But it was a great game.
That's all for today's TCG Tuesday, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but I had a lot of fun with it. I really love the Pokemon trading card game, and I figured I'd do at least a little weekly segment to share a deck with you guys, let you know how some of these more competitive decks work in the Pokemon trading card game. If you have any suggestions of future decks that you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section below, and maybe we'll revisit it next week on the next TCG Tuesday. As always, you can click that subscribe button at the bottom to get alerts when my new videos are coming out. Have a nice week, and I'll see you guys with a new deck next week for the next TCG Tuesday.